local man is considering packing up all this shit and making the same mistakes in a different city. <laughs> and I just feel like, like, heal yourself first, bro. Like, get over your bullshit before you just start fucking somebody else. The following program is intended for a mature audience. Viewer discretion is advised. This I've got to see. It's worth watching, so stay tuned. Wife comes back from vacation today. She's been out of the house a month and on vacation a week and a half. I don't know if I want her back. She's been nice while gone, of course, to probably try and keep me where she wants me. The one comment that has struck me is when she said, don't think I won't child support your ass during an argument simply because I was smoking weed. We don't even have, by the way, smoking weed, Colorado, baby, whatever. <laughs> we don't even have kids. That's a whole other topic I've brought up before. We don't even have kids. So we don't even have kids, but she said, don't think I won't child support your ass. Her claws aren't in me how they used to be. I'm scared if I see her again, the hooks will be right back. I reckon if I should, I reckon I should just go with the flow. Anybody in here successfully got under another woman to get over one? Question mark. How did it turn out? If so, was it a fling? Did it work out and you married that person? Did it backfire? I know many of us think we're codependent, so we put up with the abuse. Well, I like I face palmed about six times reading that this morning. Um, you know, by the way, I'll, I'll just make a comment on marijuana. Like, so that's something that I've quit. I have a hard time. This is me being vulnerable, guys. So alcohol isn't a problem for me, but weed's kind of a problem. Like I kind of get, it's, it gets on a roll real fast, you know, and it's like, oh, I'm bored. I'm just going to go get high again. So I've actually quit that. And Colorado, that's not the easiest thing to do, right? It's legal. So that's me being vulnerable that there's things that, you know, if I don't feel like I can be in control with it, or it doesn't serve my life, you know, basically, it's just kind of a negative spiral. It's something I should stay away from. I could definitely have a couple beers, no problem. And that's never an issue for me, you know, but marijuana, I stay away from. So one thing this guy is saying about the weed is obviously, that's a problem. Otherwise, it wouldn't have even he wouldn't even mentioned it if it wasn't, by the way. And his wife wouldn't be saying something about it if it wasn't. So lots of shit in there. Yeah, Patrick Shea, come on in, babe. Appreciate it. Come on in. I think I just called him babe accidentally. <laughs> Come on in, buddy, blah, 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 bro. And it's turned into babe. I'll just, <laughs> hey, babe. Uh, unmute yourself, baby. And I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum, right? Like I have a medical card for a legitimate condition and it's helped improve my quality of life and my function in a really unique way. So yeah. it's funny. Everybody's got, everybody's got their way they go through life. But That's right. here are two men, you and I, who have a lot of mutual respect for one another. And here we have this incredible difference of opinion. It's horrible. Thank you. Sir. <laughs> Is that all you want to say? It was about the weed, not about, okay, whatever. That's cool. Well, you know, hey, I like your poll though, because I was thinking about that this morning because I was like, you know, do I really trust what I'm feeling or thinking here? Like, am I really reading this situation right? And the one thing that Cynthia helped me to was learn to trust myself because she, she showed me that I was seeing things for what they are. I just didn't want to believe them. So, yes, trust is good. Wow. So tell us a little bit more. You didn't want to believe them, even though you were seeing them a certain way, you were feeling right a certain way and you didn't trust it before. Yeah. I mean, the greatest thing is like, you know, my marriage is over, but my heart knew it was over two years ago. It took my head two years to get to that point because mm. I didn't want to let go in my head. But, um, and then as you go forward with boundaries, you know, people start challenging you and you're like, no, that's not going to work for me. And so, and you do that more and you start to trust yourself and things go well. Um, you know, for me, it's usually like, uh, it's always in like a female setting where it's like, okay, am I reading this right? You know, you don't want to scare her, but yeah, she's fucking hot. And yeah, I want to do this. And, you know, so, I mean, it's, uh, you know, there's too many variables sometimes. So you just got to like, let it flow, take a deep breath and let it open and see where it goes. So. I love it. So one more quick question. How did you, how did you get to that point of trusting yourself more? Is there something actionable that you did or a mindset that you changed? I think it was gradual, um, you know, but I think a lot of it was because of the work that I've done with you in the small groups where I've really taken that deep dive and looked at the dark parts of me and the, 
the shadow parts and the parts I was ashamed of and the parts I was afraid to admit that I had. And I own them now. And the more I own them, it's like, the more you connect even more deeply with people because your authenticity level is more genuine. So, I mean, my trust factor, like a year ago, I wouldn't trust myself 50%. I didn't know which way was up or down. I wasn't grounded. I wasn't thinking straight, you know? So grounded, there you go. Lowest common denominator, get your ass grounded. Beautiful, yeah, and getting around other guys like you are now and like you did in our groups. I, I appreciate that, Patrick, I honor that. Fantastic, thanks oh, for jumping in. That helps, and if you boys are thinking about the six month program with Jeff's boot camp, ass kick, um, you know what, do it. It's, uh, hasn't been a bad thing for me. Thank you, Patrick. I didn't ask him to say that. I, I, am I getting red? I appreciate you saying that, Patrick. That's really cool. Thank you, man. Very cool. Who else wants to jump in? Thank you, Patrick. That was fantastic. Jump in about trust or I'll go, I have to ask about how do you trust yourself? 81.5. Oliver, how do you trust you? Can you come in, Dave? Can you come in? Hey, well, how do you trust yourself? Eight, I call him Oliver. He's not used to that. How do you, <laughs> what's 81.5 mean? Come on in. Trusting yourself. I'm not quite to 82 yet. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, uh, you know, for the most part, I trust myself. Um, but there is still doubt every now and then. Uh, it, if I'll revert back, um, I really haven't had a chance to. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess I haven't had a chance to have some experience, but um, I don't know, I'm still learning, growing, and uh, that's about where I feel myself at right now. Nice. Nice. I love your little smile and you look bushy eyed. What's the, what's the saying? Bright eyed and bushy tailed. Is that right? <laughs> bushy eyed. You look, you look bushy eyed. Oh, I um, trim these things. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't want to know. I don't know. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. Good to, good to see you, man. All right. So yeah. Let's get back to the post. Jordan says this man has a major scarcity mindset to me. So let's see, what's one big one? Like, I'm scared if I see her again, the hooks will be right back. I mean, we can all relate to that one, right? But then he says, I reckon I should just go with the flow. Anybody have success here effing another woman to get over mine? Um, you know, we're codependent, so we just put up with abuse. Patrick? Yeah, I feel like the, you know, get get under one to get over one thing. Um, it just reminds me of an article from The Onion that I read one time that says, local man is considering packing up all this shit and making the same mistakes in a different city. <laughs> and I just feel like, like, heal yourself first, bro. Like, get over your bullshit before you just start fucking somebody else. <laughs> yeah, I totally love it. Oh, my God. Thanks for jumping in, Patrick. Good to see you, man. <laughs> I was going to say, too, you know, this dude's just feeding his codependency. He's sitting there, is, is this just what we were used to? Is, you know, take some time to yourself and work on yourself to break away from this codependency, you know, you know that, that codependency. If you're just going to jump into one to get over another, you're just saying, hey, I'm codependent. And this is what I need. To do. You're not breaking the cycle for yourself. This is going to keep living the same damn life you're living. Absolutely, so. Rob. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Thanks for jumping in. I mean, it, it, that's, I want, I don't want to compare, but if you're going to get over, if you're just trying to fill that hole within you by drinking or, you know, whatever it may be, none of that's going to be good. So this whole, like, you just need to get on with another woman. Like, uh, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. So fun highlight from a different form. I just, I'm proud of us, right? I'm proud of this form. I'm proud of you guys. I'm proud of what you want to do. I'm proud of you you know, taking this time for yourself and not just trying to like find a glory hole to make, to make yourself feel better. I heard that on the radio the other day, like, oh, I hadn't heard that since high school. <laughs> it's like invited to the glory hole. No, that's a different, that wasn't, that's not true. That's not true. To watch the rest of this episode for free and other episodes, go to greatmenmovemountains.com slash VIP. Punch in your info and watch the rest for free. Get more affection, love, and sex in your marriage. Get less paralyzing fear and rejection. Never miss an episode. Watch anytime, anywhere, 3 a.m. on the toilet. Get full episodes. GreatMenMoveMountains.com forward slash VIP. The C-Note Show.